Hey, welcome back to My Messy Garage. My name is Gary Grant. If you've been following the Top Gear fiasco over the past few weeks, you probably know that uh, Clarkson has been fired. BBC did the completely the right thing. Um, seems like Hammond and May, they've probably got contracts still on the table, but they're not talking much and, and neither is Clarkson other than to say, leave the poor schmuck that I punched alone. Um, the British media seems to go to these guys' houses and talk to them on the front step. It's bizarre. Anyway, um, you know they'll pop up somewhere else in a year or two and it'll be funny. And you know that the, um, you know that the BBC is going to continue Top Gear with other hosts, some other format. It'll forever be compared to the so-called original and it'll probably suck. So let's move on, shall we? This weekend, um, second round of, the, of Formula One was in Malaysia, and the F1 squad sort of did everything right for a change. Um, for the first two thirds of the race, there was actual passing. These guys were racing each other. First time I've had fun watching an F1 race in, in ages, and that for me is saying something. The Mercedes squad cocked it up a bit early on in the race, um, went under yellow, they brought Hamilton in, he was the first one in, and the timing didn't work, the gamble didn't pay off, and he was never able to catch Vettel, uh, even though he was gaining on him at the end of the race. Uh, needless to say, Sebastian Vettel in his first ride with Ferrari won the Italian giant another race, it's first in, in forever, and he was visibly excited and it, it seemed genuine. It was really cool to sort of see that level of excitement from a driver. Um, so all of you that think that Hamilton's going to run away with the season, I don't think so. The F1 circus may have gotten it right, but really here in North America, it was the first round of the 2015 IndyCar season that was a circus. Um, nothing short of an embarrassment. The, there was good clean driving for most of the race. Um, the reality of, of close quarters racing is there's going to be a certain level of contact even if it's just you know a little shoulder nudge here and there and these new aero kits that everyone's been talking about they're just not up to the up to the task. I mean there were shards of carbon fiber or, or bread box sized chunks of, of car all over the track on a regular basis. I think they had eight cautions um, just to pick up crap off the track and it really made for a boring race. Um, you know Montoya in the end Montoya drove away from Will Power and um, you know that uh, Roger Penske's happy that he put his money on the right horse. Our Canadian boy James Hinchcliffe, well, he predicted that he might have a, a rough weekend, and he had a rough weekend. I mean, it, it, he started 16th, he was up I think as high as 5th at one point as the um, pit stops cycled through, and but at the end he was he, he was right back where he started in 16th. You know that for Hinchcliffe and James Jakes and the uh, and the team, it's going to get better. It'll be they'll have a decent season. This is a bit of a weird week for me. It's the first time in about five years that I haven't been at the New York International Auto Show, which is a bit of a bummer because this morning Lincoln unveiled their new Continental concept. Um, unlike Continentals of years gone by, it doesn't have that um, faux vertical spare tire lump in the in the trunk lid. I'm pretty sure that the aftermarket will take care of that real quick. Um, Lincoln's had a tough time um, with their brand identity in recent years. If they can put some serious quality into this car to go along with the the beautiful style then they'll show that they're on their way to, to having that that fixed. 
Last week I told you that I was driving a Hyundai Sonata Sport. Uh, this year somehow I've ended up in a Sonata Sport Ultimate. What's the difference? Well, the difference is where it counts. Under the hood of this one is a 2 liter turbo instead of the 2.4. This one generates 245 horsepower and it transforms the car into from a family sedan into a car that is an absolute blast to drive. In the Ultimate, the driver can choose to use paddle shifters. They do a nice job, but it's still an automatic transmission. You know, if you're going to build a sports sedan, you're going to go after the likes of the BMW 3 Series and, and cars like that, then give it a manual transmission, or at least give buyers the option of, of having it. Because um, this engine would be so much fun in this car with a proper gearbox. Um, anyway, uh, it seems to be a rant that I'm losing uh, with more and more manufacturers, and it's a real shame. That's it for now. For DrivenWheels.com, I'm Gary Grant. Thanks for watching.